good morning. This is Tony, 456 Chevy Trucks. Today we're going to be out in the shop taking a look at a small block Chevy. Um, it's going to be a donor motor for a little 64 Chevrolet truck. We're having some coolant in the uh, oil pan, so we're going to have to get into the bottom end of that thing and uh, see what's going on. Let's go take a look. Try to make sure that the... Uh, to make sure that the uh, engine when it's in like the 12 o'clock position that the engine's actually level uh, sometimes they're loaded on the stand and they're cockeyed and then it just makes it difficult to and i'm a parallel perpendicular kind of guy so i like to i like to that You laid a level right across here, and that's level. I like this to be level, so that when we put it in the stand, if it's level here, then it'll be level there in this in this index. What's that Pro Street yeah. 66 in the background? What's the story on that? Like folks might be asking about that Kansas City Chiefs mobile in the distance. I just zoomed in on it. What year is that truck? That's a 1964. 64 GMC one ton panel, um, which is fairly rare. Fairly rare, really. They make a lot of one tons, and the ones they did, you know, got used up. You know, the, the mechanic, the plumber, the you know, carpenter. Fill them full of tools and the mobile workshop, so they got, they got used up a lot. So there's not a lot of them, not a lot of them still around that are streetable. the lobes high on the uh, hydraulic lifter. So when you pull these out, because when you turn the motor, invert the motor, uh, you don't want to drop your lifters out. On the... out its juices pull off the, pull off the, uh, the gasket looks gasket. pretty good yeah these gaskets still look like they're good uh, some guys will say never reuse a head gasket but this, since this is a fresh rebuild mm -hmm. supposedly a fresh rebuild mm -hmm. uh, we'll go with that for now but ultimately when you buy it when you buy a rebuild kit You'll get new head gaskets, you're putting them on, so sometimes it's just better for peace of mind to put the put the new head gaskets on. Um, in this case, we're still just troubleshooting. This 350, you see what our cooling issue is, so we can get it ready to put in that 64. On this motor, I like the motor to be level when I'm either at, at uh, vertical, 180, or 90, either way. It's just better ergonomics when you're working on something, so. Now what we'll do is, uh, These obviously have been uh, these have been these have been replaced because those are grade H. You can tell they got the gold cadmium on them. Cadmium.
then if this is glued down, in theory, if this is glued down well, it's not going to surrender very easily. Start to lift it here a little bit. Yeah, that's glued on quite well. Uh, it's a gasket, but it's got RTV on it. RTV's gasket maker, RTV. You know, it was pretty typical for sealing up a sealing up a motor. But sometimes, this case is one of them. This one looks like it's been sealed up quite nicely, quite good. And we did, I did uh, unfortunately put a cut in it, so we will have to replace this pan gasket. Okay, so there's the money shot. Obviously, with that milky, you start getting milky uh, oil like that, that's typically. That's, uh, that's what the oil looks like when it's mixed with coolant. We'll start to get milkshake looking coloration and consistency. We we're getting coolant in the pan, so we're wanting to do a, uh, we're wanting to do a uh, bottom end inspection, see if there's anything obvious where we could tell um, that we got a coolant jacket issue. A 5.7 uh, GM crate motor. It's a two bolt main. When they talk about two bolt and four bolt mains, these are main caps. They call them mains. These are the main caps. That's what the uh, crankshaft rotates on an axis right through here. So when there's two bolts holding down the cap, it's called a two bolt main. And then when there's four bolts, uh, it'll be a four bolt main. So it's a quick visual identifier, number one. Uh, secondly, uh, these are rod caps. So when you hear about spinning a bearing, um, you know, spun a bearing on the bottom end. See, they're spinning a main, they're spinning a rod bearing. That's that's the lingo, that's what they're talking about. Um, I can tell this motor's been uh, uh, taken apart and reassembled because you'll see on the back of these rod caps, that's hole number two, so that's got a two on it. Obviously, this is one. And you'll see as you go down the line, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the back of these rod caps so the rod cap should stay with the the rod itself when you're pulling the motor apart you always want to keep the rod and the cap together so when you're putting them back together you know they make back together like they're supposed to freely spins which is a good thing um we were anticipating seeing either some some uh, debris in the either some debris in the uh in the oil pan or a portion of the block uh, casting broken off which would breach a water jacket because the amount of coolant that's going into the pan um, would indicate it's more than just a hairline crack from a frozen block or whatever but I don't see anything I don't see anything that would uh, I don't see any broken off chunks sometimes if you get what they call piston slap that little skirt of that piston will break off right there but I don't see anything anything like that we've already we've already eliminated the top end uh, possibilities because we've uh, we've had the heads uh, cleaned and magna flexed no hairline cracking in the heads um, we will deck the heads and deck the block, but we're still we're still puzzled here on uh, on how the coolant's getting in the uh, oil pan. That's the oil pickup. So as you see, there's a screen in the bottom of that oil or in the oil pickup. So if you get any big chunks, this is the oil pickup. So as the oil pump, this is the oil pump. As it spins, what it's doing is it's sucking oil through the oil pump, pumping it to the top of the motor under pressure 
you hear people talking about 30 pounds, 30 pounds of oil pressure, 60 pounds of oil pressure. Um, that's the that's the apparatus that's treating that oil pressure. So, um, what's a good oil pressure? 40 to 50? Uh, or? It's, on cold starts, you know, you might you might uh, run the needle up, might run up to 60 or better. But at operating temperatures, depending on the time of the year, how hot it is outside, things like that. Um, 40, 35 to 45 is a, is a good uh, okay. PSI for a small block Chevy. RTV is what you're seeing here. It stands for room temperature vulcanization. So basically it'll, the rubber will vulcanize at room temperature um, and then it'll stay, you know, solid. It won't, it won't uh, melt, it stay stable. So it shows pretty liberal, pretty liberal use of it on this one, but that's not a bad thing necessarily unless you chunk some out and it gets in your oil passages and that's no good but uh, nonetheless it's uh, this motor was sealed up good here uh, freeze plugs these are freeze plugs right here they'll be on the side of the motor both sides uh, they're in the front of a small block they also have them in the rear of the small block and then a couple of small ones, but the, the point is, if in fact the coolant, there's not enough coolant or there's not enough temperature, the whole idea is coolant is to keep the water that's in the motor from freezing, um, raises the freeze temperature way up. So typically, if this block, the whole idea of these, a freeze plug, is if in fact the, the, uh, the, the coolant or the water, the liquid inside the motor were to freeze, um, these will pop out. In theory, these are made to pop out. Um, and that keeps from um, cracking the actual block itself. That's a replaceable wear part, and then you maintain the integrity of the block. Now sometimes, if those haven't been changed, or they won't freely release under pressure, um, the water will expand enough where it'll actually cause some hairline cracking in your block. I don't see any of that on this motor. Um, now sometimes you can't see it. Um, sometimes it'll only manifest itself when the motor's up to operating temperature because it, it expands. And then a hairline crack becomes uh, big enough for the coolant and or oil, typically coolant because it's the water jackets that grows. Um, will, uh, you'll get some hairline cracking in the block. And again, I don't, I don't see that here, but what they, there's a process they use, it's called magnafluxing. They clean it, they put a dye on it, and then they use a uh, light that'll make those hairline cracks visible, visible to the naked eye. Um, and that may be the next thing. We may go ahead and end up stripping this thing down. We'll take the front accessories off, take the, take the uh, vulcanized rubber uh, motor mounts off of it strip it down to a true short block, which is just a rotating assembly, cam, uh, crank, uh, rods and pistons, um, and then take it to the machine shop and have a magnaflux it for us. Because I'm still not seeing anything that would allow that much coolant. And I will say, I'm gonna say that this isn't the correct uh, head gasket for this motor. And the reason being is because, and this is easy for the do-it-yourselfer, if you if you see that see that outline right there, mm -hmm. that outline right there. Here's the water jackets in this engine. As you can see, do a quick quick looky here. Um, got two two tiny holes here, one tiny hole here, there, one tiny hole there. But if you look, it's covering it up. That's substantially re restricting the uh, water flow. Now down here. These holes are smaller than those, and this one here is plugged up entirely. Oh my God. So I'm gonna say uh, that this is not the correct, um, this is not the correct uh, valve or uh, head gasket for this application. Would that have anything to do with restricting? I don't know if that would necessarily affect, um, I'd have to think about that. Um, Cause like that is, that's a small hole. Right. So so that those should be free wherever there's a hole in the block, 
there should be a hole in the gasket. Otherwise you're restricting either the bolts dropping in or the coolant freely flowing. Um, in this case, that's substantially reducing. Uh, these holes are smaller. This hole's not there at all. Uh, that hole's substantially smaller, substantially smaller than, than the water jackets in the engine. So that may not cause the problem that we're having, but that's not helping the problem either. Now what we're gonna do, let's get over here where we can see. We're gonna see if we can see anything obvious. Looking down on the water jackets. So what you see there, that is, uh, and it's difficult to see, but that is that the cylinder wall in the casting. Now, I will say this block has never been uh, this block has never been put through a hot wash cabinet because if it was put through a hot wash cabinet, you wouldn't see all this corrosion. That's the whole idea. So what they'll do is they'll put them in a hot wash cabinet. It's basically like a your wife's dishwasher on uh, steroids. High temp. I don't see anything obvious there. Uh, but it's high temp, so it cooks all that stuff, and then it, it'll flake off. And then what they'll do is they'll also bake it. They'll put it in an oven, and they get it so hot that any grease and dirt and stuff will cook all the moisture out of it. What do we got here? I don't know what that is, but it doesn't look like a hole. But anyway, it cooks all the moisture out of the grease and dirt and so on. And then basically what it'll do is it'll flake off. And cast iron blocks are notorious for the sand casting causes all this rough texture. So therefore you see stuff has a profile to stick to. Like an aluminum, like an LS application or any kind of aluminum performance type uh, engine. These would all be super smooth surfaces. So there'd be no friction, there'd be free flow coolant flows freely you don't get all the stuff sticking sticking to the walls because everywhere that's everywhere you're getting stuff sticking to the walls um let's just cut down on the efficiency the coolant the cooling efficiency so in a performance application they eliminate all that kind of stuff everything tried everything that we can do with the equipment we have here so I'm thinking if we're gonna move forward with this block I think we're gonna have to have it uh, we're gonna have to have it uh, magnet flux have to have it hot washed put through the hot wash cabinet uh, magnet fluxed because I don't see anything obvious Hello, 456 Chevy truck lovers. This is Tony, 456 Chevy Trucks. Hey, uh, we're uh, picking up where we left off on this little small block Chevy, uh, this 5.7. Um, we're still getting, uh, we, we, we did our exploratory uh, top end and bottom end uh, earlier today. Still never found any uh, breach in water jackets, uh, visible anyway. So I'm gonna do a rather non-scientific uh, uh, kind of bench test here if you will um in theory i should be able to uh fill up the left and right bank of this uh five seven uh with some water and uh if it starts uh, leaking out that's going to be pretty indicative of where that uh where that's coming from so my hopes is my hopes are that it doesn't leak um but we're going to give it a go so stand by filled the left and right uh, banks of this uh, this 5.7 you can see if you look down in the 
hooked down in the uh, water jackets there. Um, filled the left and right banks of this uh, this engine with uh, just put water in it. Um, use a little funnel there, put water in it. Um, both sides. So as you can see, um, jackets are filled all the way up before they come out the bottom uh, head bolt, threaded head bolt holes. I'm gonna let this set overnight. I'm actually gonna, uh, I'm gonna let it set overnight and then I'm gonna monitor it, see where we're at in the morning. But I'm gonna say this, uh, this block is not, does not have any internal uh, water jacket breaches. Um, as you know, uh, water travels the path of least resistance. So I see nothing that would indicate none of the holes are, there's no seepage in any of the, in the cylinder walls. Um, this one here, I did spill just a little bit in the bottom of that, but I, uh, I dried it out. So if in fact there's any breaches, hairline cracks in this, uh, internally in this block, uh, it's cast iron GM uh, crate motor block. Um, if there are, in fact, any uh, internal breaches, hairline cracks or anything, it'll manifest itself overnight because that water will find its way to daylight. And there's only a couple of kilos, but I, uh, I uh, put my oil absorb on the floor. So if we have any wet spots in the morning, uh, be another telltale sign and it's dripping out somewhere, and then I can... Uh, then I can backtrack and find out where it's coming from. So we're going to leave it at that, let it set overnight, and then we'll uh, revisit in the morning and uh, let you know what the outcome is. So keep on trucking. And for your 60 to 66 Chevy GMC truck panel and suburban parts, service, and tech support, uh, please give us a shout out. Follow us on Instagram, 456 Chevy Trucks. And then we also have a uh, Facebook Facebook page, 4-5-6 Chevy Trucks. Have a good night. Be safe and stay healthy.